Welcome back class, I'm Mr. Teacher with the SAT Math Video Guide. Getting back to section 8, number 5 of test number 5. According to the graph above, between which two consecutive years was there the greatest change in the price of coffee? So, they're asking for the greatest change in the price of coffee. They didn't ask whether it has to be the greatest increase or the greatest decrease, just the greatest change. So let's start from the left side. These are all of the 1900s, so 1981, 1982, 1983, so on. So from 81 to 82, there is a change of 0 0.25. From 82 to 83, there is a 0 0.75 change. From 83 to 84, there is a 0.5 change. From 84 to 85, that is 4.75 to 3.75, there is a 1 change, change of 1. From 85 to 86, there is a 0 0.75 change. So the greatest change was be between year 1984 and 1985 and that is choice D moving on to number six which is a graph so we're just gonna draw this quickly here this is the y-axis this is the x-axis so one, one of two negative 1, negative 2, origin. So this starts somewhere here. Goes down to here. And then rises up and continues on. So the graph of y equals g of x is shown above. If g of k is equal to 1, which of the following is a possible value of k? So once again, if you remember what a function is, it's, ooh, apologies there. What it is, is f of, in f of x, x is the x value, and f of x is the y value. So in the case of g of k, g of k is equal to the y value, which is equal to 1. k is equal to the x value, which we're not sure of yet. Now we need to find where the graph is equal to 1. It's between the x values of negative 1 and 0. So any value between negative 1 and 0 will work. Looking at the answer choices, the only one that works is negative 0.5, which is choice B. Number seven has to do with ex exponents. Oh, I have reached the bottom of the page. We'll just move to the other side. And then we'll continue onwards. So, right here. Okay, number seven. If a, b, and c are different positive integers and two to the a times 2 to the b times 2 to the c is equal to 64, then 2 to the a plus 2 to the b plus 2 to the c is equal to what? Now, a, b, and c are three different integers, and we are not given any other information about this, so we can assume that we need to use base bases of 2. So let's say... 2 to the a times 2 to the b times 2 to the c. We can rewrite this as 2 to the a plus b plus c. This is equal to 64. How else can we write 64? We can write it as a base of 2, right? 2 to the, let's see, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. So 2 to the 6th. So 2 to the a plus b plus c is equal 
to 2 to the 6. Now, a, b, and c are different positive integers. That means there are only th three, po one possible, there is only one possible answer for this. That's if the combination of a, b, and c is 2 to the 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to um, 2 to the 6. And that is true. 2 to the 6 is equal to 2 to the 6. It doesn't really matter which, whether you choose a to be 1 or 3. It just matters that you have these values on. So now we need to find 2 to the a plus 2 to the b plus 2 to the c. So let's just assume a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2, and c is equal to 3. So 2 plus 2 to the second, 2 squared plus 2 cubed, which is equal to 2 plus 4 plus 8, which is equal to 14 which is answer choice A. Number 8 has to do with circles. So, In the XY plane, the center of a circle has coordinates 3 and negative 7. If one endpoint of a diameter of the circle is so endpoint of a diameter of a circle is negative 2 comma negative 7 what are the coordinates of the other endpoint of this diameter so since it is a diameter and the, we know the y value of the di endpoint of the diameter is negative 7 and the, the y value of the center is negative 7 we can assume that the other endpoint is also going to be negative 7 now, the y value of the other endpoint. And if we count from the x value from the center to one endpoint, that is 3 minus minus 2, which is equal to 5. So we need to add 5 to 3 to find the x value of the other x coordinate of the other endpoint, which is 8. Pretty quick. That's choice E. Number 9. This has been quite a tough one for me all the time, even to explain in certain situations. A regulation for riding a certain amusement park ride requires that a child be between 30 inches and 50 inches tall. Which of the following inequalities can be used to determine whether or not a child's height h satisfies the regulation for this ride? Okay then. So. There really isn't a direct way to solve this besides just trying out each one. So I will write out the answer choices here. H minus 10. The absolute value of H minus 10 is less than 50. Okay. Choice B is the absolute value of H minus 20 is less than 40. And then C. The absolute value of h minus 30 is less than 20. And then d, the absolute value of h minus 40 is less than 10. And e, the absolute value of h minus 45 is less than 5. So this will be slightly long to solve. So what we need to do to be absolutely sure we get the correct answers is pick a height that will supposedly work and a height that will supposedly not work. I'm sorry, there are noises outside. So let's say a height that works is 40 since we're picking between 30 inches and 50 inches tall and a height that doesn't work is 60. Okay, so I did pick those numbers, but we need to first of all examine the equations, as if you were to plug in the numbers, it would end up being a mess, and eventually you would even see that every number works in every function, which is a big problem. So, we need to look at these equations much more carefully. If we look at 
say choice A, which is height minus 10 has to be less than 50. This basically says that the distance from the height from the height to 10 must be less than 50. This doesn't really help us much. The reason being that our range of height is between 30 inches and 50 inches. Now I know this is a bit tough to understand why it would be like that, but I would like you to skip ahead a little bit to choice D, where it says H, uh, the absolute value of H minus 40 has to be less than 10. So this says that starting from the point 40, so th this is 30, this is 50, and this is 40, our middle point. Starting from 40, we do not want our child's height to be more than 10 away from the limit. So this is 10 and this is 10. So the distance has to be less than 10. It cannot be 10 as it is between 30 and 50. And that's what this equation shows perfectly well. So the answer is choice D. It is quite confusing initially because we don't see these problems that often on the SAT. It's much more practical, but this is quite the tricky question. So if you didn't get it the first time, if you, it's nothing to be ashamed of. I didn't get it the first time, and it took me quite a while to figure it out. So, yes, I hope this helped you with your SAT preparation, and I will see you in the next video.